Right, uh, thanks to everyone who's uh, dialed in to attend my presentation today. Much appreciated. Uh, I'm here to talk about a performance monitoring study we did of a high flow rate bioretention system at Western Sydney in Australia. So look, first up, what is high flow rate bioretention system? Uh, look, that tree pit system you can see on the left, that is a high flow rate bioretention system. It's just like conventional bioretention systems, but smaller. So instead of the, a conventional system using sandy loam filter media, which might drain at say 200 millimeters an hour, we use a, an engineered media, what we call Filtera. Uh, it's a very carefully uh, manufactured media, perfect for removing pollution and creating an environment for plants to thrive in. Um, so we use that instead of sandy loam media, but this media can drain much quicker uh, at around about three and a half to four and a half meters. We also use a layer of mulch on the surface to create like a coarse screening to trap uh, fines and silts that can otherwise block the filter media. And also that's really good for retaining moisture within the filter media as well for, to again help plants. Uh, so because of this uh, media can drain much quicker, these systems can be much smaller. Filtera bioretention systems uh, or high flow rate systems are sized at 0.3% of the upstream catchment. Uh, within Australia, we conventional bioretention is generally about one to two percent of the upstream catchment. Uh, so the key attractive feature of these systems is that they can be integrated uh, in highly constrained urban environments, in particular, because they are essentially somewhere between three to seven times smaller. So these are some examples of Filtera bioretention systems that have been put in in, in Australia. Um, in these cases, a range of uh, vegetation species. Um, and like in this case, for example, that Silverdale, this system would have been five times larger if it had been a conventional system. So very attractive from a developer perspective. Um, and similar for these uh, systems in Caloundra, we would have really struggled to integrate these systems given the highly constrained nature of, of this development. Uh, so the client uh, went uh, and, and chose to use Filtera bioretention systems. Uh, but whilst it's a relatively new technology in, the, in Australia, uh, they've been around in the States for a long time, about 15 years. Uh, so there's some 9,000 examples of these in the States um, and uh, a bunch of monitoring to support their use. But we were very keen to actually assess how effective they might be in Australian conditions. So we had to choose a site to actually uh, integrate a Filtera bioretention system and see how well it performs. So we started off with 12 sites and through a process of elimination, based on monitoring, et cetera, uh, selected one location um, to undertake that monitoring. We developed a, a quality assurance project plan to essentially define the roles and responsibilities, uh, the frameworks as to how to undertake this monitoring. Uh, and also we were very careful to make sure we complied with relevant um, storm water treatment asset protocols that within Australia. There's one uh, at the time uh, put out by Gold Coast City Council, for example, and there's also a storm water Australia protocol. So we just wanted to make sure that we complied with those requirements, which we do. Uh, the site itself is in Western Sydney, uh, humid subtropical environment, uh, 720 millimetres of rainfall a year on average. Uh, and the site was located in the campus, uh, the Kingswood campus, of the University of Western Sydney, uh, integrated into a, a car park. So it was a, a, a 420 square meter catchment uh, of 100% you know, imperviousness car park site, and it drained to a tree pit system. Uh, it was installed in uh, about three and a half years ago in April, 2018. And that system you can see on the left, that is the uh, Filtera bioretention system we undertook the monitoring of. Um, if you look at the same site from a different angle, you can see the cabinet that sits behind the system uh, and that has a whole bunch of very fancy uh, monitoring equipment to assess how well the system is working. Uh, so we essentially measure flow rates. Uh, we uh, have automatic samplers to take samples of the influent and the effluent. Uh, it's stored in, the, in cold conditions. So someone can subsequently collect those uh, samples and collect, uh, and sorry, transport them to an appropriate lab for assessment. So whilst Ocean Protect, uh, my company uh, put together all the, in, we installed the Filtera system, we set up the equipment, uh, uh, ALS and uh, Western Sydney University are responsible for the collection and al analysis of those samples. Um, 
So look, it's been really successful. Uh, it's a it's a really good uh, monitoring, uh, I guess, setup. It, it enables us to actually uh, tailor and program the sampling, the timing of the samplings, uh, so we can communicate remotely with the um, system based on, and based on the rainfall conditions, we can essentially time or or, or select the timing of the sampling uh, arrangements. But look, long story short, after nearly well, some three years, we've collected 38 individual qualifying rainfall events. And 28 of those events have been collected after what we call the, the establishment period. The, the, the first 12 months of the after the installation of the system, when the, when the vegetation sort of establishing a little bit. Um, but after that 12 month period, we've collected 20, uh, 28 uh, um, qualifying events. We've seen really high flow rates go through the system. Um, and we're just doing standard maintenance uh, on on this Filterra bioretention system, so we we genuinely genuinely recommend that the mulch uh, be replaced every twelve months. Uh, so this system isn't getting any sort of you know gold plated maintenance intervention. It's just standard um, maintenance practices. And so what did we see? So long story short, the system has, has been shown to work really well, really high rates of, of pollution removal. So this is just a summary showing, I guess, the, the key urban stormwater pollutants that are of particular concern in Australia, you know, total suspended solids, total phosphorus, total nitrogen, um, and really good rates of uh, concentration reduction. And we're also seeing this system actually does seem to be getting better with age. So that's probably due to the fact that the, the, the system's more sort of stable, that the, the tree's a little bit bigger, uh, more root biomass, more biological sort of uh, activity within the rhizomes, et cetera. Uh, and yeah, so the, the pollution concentration reductions uh, are a little bit higher after that first 12 months worth of establishment. Um, so you look, after 12 months, we're seeing, you know, for those 28 qualifying events, we're seeing 85% you know, uh, TSS efficiency ratio for total phosphorus, 80% reductions and for total nitrogen, 47% reduction. So really, really solid results um, showing that this system does work really well, um, uh, at least at this side in Australia. How does it compare to other sort of monitoring that's undertaken um, to date? Um, so there's been a, a stack of monitoring of full terabyte retention systems uh, in the US. Uh, and there's also been obviously monitoring of conventional bioretention systems uh, within Australia and overseas as well. And look, it's worth noting that conventional bioretention systems, um, they, they can vary in their characteristics. Often there's different filter medias used, for example. Um, generally, it's, we reckon it's recommended to use sandy loam media, but often these studies use different um, uh, filter media types. Um, but look, long story short, the Filterra bioretention systems, our study compares reasonably well um, with the US Filterra studies. And the Filterra studies in general, the, the, the pollution reduction rates are actually fairly consistent, you know, consistently high rates of, of total suspended solids, total phosphorus and total nitrogen removal. For the conventional systems, look, the results are variable, uh, certainly. Now that might be a, a, a due to um, you know, the different filter media, the different vegetation, the different monitoring methodologies maybe, but certainly um, several of the, the conventional bioretention studies do show significant nutrient leaching. So nutrient concentrations increasing across the system. Uh, whereas again, for Filterra, uh, it's fairly consistently. And it's, again, it's worth noting that that Filterra bioretention media is very carefully manufactured and made. There's a, like a 25 step QA, QC process to make sure that it's in accordance with the appropriate specifications, which probably would go a long way to making sure that its performance is very consistent as well. So look, in summary, we saw really high rates of uh, pollution reductions uh, across the system at Western Sydney. Um, you know, TSS uh, of 85% for um, uh, efficiency ratio, total phosphorus 80%, TN 47%. You know, they're, they're really good uh, pollution concentration reductions. Um, and these results are fairly consistent with the results that we've seen in the US studies as well. What are we doing next? So we're essentially going to continue monitoring this uh, system. Uh, we're going to look to see if we could, there's potential to increase the flow rate uh, for these Filterra bioretention systems. And we're looking to experiment with uh, a wicking design to essentially increase uh, flow reduction across the system. And look, uh, that's my presentation. I'm really looking forward to uh, uh, answering any questions that anyone might have. So uh, thanks very much.